Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 5-3 from the Forrester textbook. Today we are going to talk about three things we are going to discuss when functions, which trig functions are odd and even. We're going to then help us with the, that will then help us with the definition of co-functions. What do all those co-prefixes mean on those various trig functions? Which will then allow us to do the sum and difference of all the other trig functions that we've been lacking. We've talked last time in 5-2 about the sum and difference of cosine uh, two, uh, and cosine of two angles added or two angles subtracted. Then that will allow us to get to the sum and difference of sine and tangent. So first of all, what we need to talk about is the odd or evenness of the various trig functions. So you can see here that I've got the sine and cosine waves. And I think I'm going to start with cosine just because that's easier to work with, easier to see. So if we look in here and we try to ask the question, what does cosine of negative x equal? What's going to happen if we plug in a negative x? So let's first of all, let's, let's look and see what happens. We plug in some positive x that that piece right there is x long. And if we plug in x into cosine, then that'll take us to some particular spot right there that is clearly going to be cosine of x. If you plug in a value into cosine, then you get a particular output based off of that input. Here the graph is in radians, which you should be used to by now. And what happens if we go the other way? Let's switch to red and say, OK, so I went about 2 point something. So let's go 2 point something this way. This is negative x. Where am I going to go? What's going to happen if I plug that in? Well, I'm going to end up right there at cosine of negative x. I plug that x value into the function. I get a certain y value. But what is clearly the case as we compare those two outputs? It doesn't matter if you plug in a positive or a negative, you're going to get the same value for cosine. So if you remember my obsession with Denzel Washington, this is the symmetrical left-right Scarlett Johansson evenness, that cosine is even. Let's, let's label that cosine is even, and it doesn't matter if you plug in a positive x or a negative x, you're going to get the same value. So if that's true for cosine, then it is also true for the reciprocal of cosine, which is secant. Secant of negative x must also just be the same as secant of x. Now, what about sine? If we try to do that same trick with sine, so let's plug in some particular value here around uh, there. This is our x. What does sine of negative x equal? That's the question we're asking. So if we plug in a positive x, then we're going to get some value right about there. That's what sine of x is. But now I'll do the same trick and I'll do red. If I try to go left, so I did three-ish units there, so three-ish units, there's negative x. But I have not ended up in the same spot there at sine of negative x. But you can see how whichever values I would have picked here, if I had picked this x and then that was negative x, that they are very, very related. One is simply the flip over the x-axis of the other that this uh, question here then says it's the same as sine of x except upside down. So this is the definition of uh, an odd function. Sine is odd. And sine of negative x is negative sine of x. And if that's true for sine, then that must also be true for its reciprocal, which is uh, cosecant. That cosecant negative x must also equal negative cosecant of x. So rather than trying to memorize all these various six trig functions that we're about to finish here, you need to just remember the graph and say, is it symmetrical left, right? That's even. Is it symmetrical rotated 180 degrees, like what we just did? Then it's odd. And I won't show you the graph of tangent. If you're curious, you can look at your calculator and see that. But it's also going to be true the same way that tangent of negative x is equal to negative tan x. And if that's true of tangent, it must be true of cotangent. So there is the evenness or the oddness of all six 
trig functions. All right, section two, the second thing that we need to talk about here is the definition of cofunctions. Now, this is going to seem unrelated, but it's all going to tie back in together in the end. So this is, I've given you a topic number one. This is topic number two. In topic number three, I'm going to bring them all back together. So persevere. Let's get through this one. You'll see how it all fits together. What we're wondering here is if we're on the unit circle, right? So we've got a radius of one. We've gone up some amount y. We've gone over some amount x. Then what is on this right triangle, this reference triangle within the unit circle, what is cosine of angle theta? Well, you remember we said that cosine is the, uh, so ka toa is the adjacent. So if I'm here, then the one adjacent to me is x, and then the hypotenuse is one. So Sokotoa helps you find out on the unit circle, on the reference triangle, that cosine is x over one. But if this triangle here, if this reference triangle has got a right angle, which is 90, and it's got theta over there, then what must this angle up here be? Well, if you remember from geometry, the interior angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. We've got 90. We've got uh, with theta. So what's left is 180. Let me write this down. 180 minus 90 minus theta. And if you just do the two numbers parts that can get there, this must be 90 minus theta in there. That is the angle. So now I can ask you a very unusual question. What is sine of uh, 90 minus theta? So what I'm saying for you to do is to orient yourself up here to this angle and then ask, what does sine ask? Sine asks for so katoa. It asks for opposite over hypotenuse. So that must be x over 1, which is the same thing that cosine of theta. Hmm. Let's see if this pattern holds. Let's do the other one here. Let's say, what is sine of theta? Well, if we're inside this. Uh, angle over here now, we're at theta, and we're going to do sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, then we're going to get y over 1. And then what is cosine of 90 minus theta? See how nice I am doing it in degrees? I'm just a generous soul. So if we have these parts, but now we're starting up here, oops, uh, now we're starting up here and we're doing cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be y over 1. So this is, if you, if you remember all those drawings we did of um, cosecant and cotangent and secant and tangent and sine and cosine, those, those triangles that we drew outside of the unit circle that expanded a little bit and either went up or to the right, that this, when we did that, I mentioned that the definition of co is that it's to the, the 90. It's to the uh, right angle later, to the uh, complementary angle. And so here we can see a definition of the co-prefix is saying it's just taking you to the angle that is 90 minus theta compared to the original theta. So in summary, what I'm saying is that if you have sine of theta, that that's equal to cosine of 90 minus theta. Or if you have cosine of theta, that that's equal to sine of 90 minus theta. They're all related to each other that way. And since this is the definition of the co-prefix, this works for all of them. So if we have secant of theta, then cosecant of 90 minus theta will be the same thing. If we have cosecant of theta, then secant of 90 minus theta will be the same thing. If we have tangent of theta, then cotangent of 90 minus theta will be the same thing. And if we have cotangent of theta, then tangent of 90 minus theta will be the same thing. That this is the definition of cofunctions. So maybe to help yourself remember this, in your notes you could write this down as 90 all six times and then go back and write it as pi over 2 in place of the 90 
all six times. I think that'll cement it in your brain. This is the definition of co-functions. This is where, where that prefix co comes from and what it means. So bear that in mind. This will be very helpful. Let's go to the third section now. All right, so this is the third thing now that's gonna tie all these pieces together. We're going to get all of our sum and difference formulas together now because we know about odd and even and we know about cofunctions. So these first two that I've already got written up here, you, we did back in 5.2 and you can rewatch that video if you need it. But what I'm hoping to be able to do now is to build with you the sine sum and difference of angles formulas from the cosine ones. So, so what we're trying to build now is the sine, let's start with the difference here. Let's find out what sine alpha minus beta is. How can we figure that out? Well, we just said in the previous section that sine is the co-function of cosine. So we could rewrite this as cosine of 90 minus that same angle. So I need to say 90 degrees minus alpha minus beta, okay? So these must be equivalent to each other by the definition of cofunctions. This is what cofunctions do. They just vary of 90 minus theta from each other. So let's just do a little bit of algebra and we'll distribute the minus sign and we'll get plus beta there. And this is all the angle there. And now I'm just gonna group things a little bit differently here. I just, I need to have only two angles. So I'm just arbitrarily gonna decide that these two are a group. I can just add parentheses where I want because uh, addition and subtraction don't care about the order. Let me rewrite that. Addition and subtraction don't care uh, as long as you keep it organized. So that's one angle and there's the other. So now we've got the cosine sum of angles and we do a little dance and we say cosine, cosine, sine, sine. We say uh, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and the first angle is 90 minus alpha, and the second angle is beta, and the first angle is 90 minus alpha, and the second angle is beta, and because it's a cosine sum, this is the one that does the opposite, I have to switch this plus right here into a minus. Okay, that's just the way the formula works when we worked it out. So what is, let's go one piece at a time, what is cosine of 90 minus alpha? Well again, there's that definition of cofunctions. This is uh, the definition of sine alpha. And then there's not much you can do with cosine beta, it's still cosine beta. And then what is the definition of sine 90 minus alpha? Well, that's the definition of cofunctions, so that must be cosine of alpha, oops, that is cosine of alpha, and then there's not much you can do with sine beta. So here, all this shenanigans was just, we were messing around with sine alpha minus beta, remember, and now we've got this formula where it goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And maybe I'll have a link up here to a video of us singing the song, The Sine Swing. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And if we did all this again with a plus, we would get sine alpha plus beta is sine alpha cos beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. But in every case, there's the cosine conga, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, for when you're doing the cosine one, and there's the sine swing, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Lastly, if we were to stack sine on top of cosine and do a whole bunch of algebra that I will totally spare you, you don't need to do all of that, you remember the definition of tangent is sine divided by cosine. So if we stacked all these together, we would get for the tangent sum of angles, we would get tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A times tan B. And if we did it with a negative, we would get the opposite in a few cases. We would get tangent alpha minus tangent beta over one plus tan alpha times tan beta. So, 
Listen to the songs, make sure you can keep straight the sine swing, the cosine conga, and the tan tan. And these will help you remember these three sets of formulas. We did the cosine one last time. Here, the point of all of this, there was even an oddness of all six trig functions, there was the definition of co-functions, and there were these new sum and difference formulas. I know there's a lot of formulas to keep straight, which is why I wrote the songs, to try to help you remember it all. So, we will be singing in class. You need to watch the videos and you need to be ready to have these different definitions of evenness, oddness, co-functions, and sum and difference of angles. This is what we're working on. So, see you in class.